Thank you for having us. It is great to be here today. Julie and I are here presenting for, together for two main reasons. The first being, we have both been working on long, extensive photographic projects on close family members. The second, we also function as one another's editors. As important as wandering and discovery is in our photography, it is as important to have a trusted editor and guide. We have assisted each other in this process over many years. When making revealing images of family members, it is invaluable to have someone who confronts similar dilemmas producing this kind of intimate work. Julia will begin our presentation by discussing two of her projects. The camera is an integral part of my life and a catalyst for discovery. It is important for me to consider the camera as an entity that has its own presence and acts as a character within my photographic narrative. This tool has been a medium for me to face conditions that are exciting, challenging, daunting, as well as beautiful. My camera allows an entrance into places and ideas, both internally and externally, that without it, I may not have the courage to look, both when I want to and when I do not. Today, I will be showing you two bodies of work. The first series of images is titled The Mathematician. Suavik, the main character, is a diagnosed schizophrenic with combined physical and developmental disabilities. He is also my cousin. The concept of wandering repeats frequently throughout my process. It also weaves its way into my narrative of Suavik's mind. In these photographs, I embrace the unpredictable stories that run through our time together. Rather than trying to control the situation, we collaborate. I allow his wandering mind to provide me with the structure of our interactions. The photographs are not documents, but instead blur the line between fact and fiction, fantasy and reality. Inspired by the theater of the absurd, these are my interpretations of the time we spend together. Rather than telling you what each image means, it is my hope that you will bring your own point of view and narrative to these images. What I would like to discuss while looking at these images are what I might have seen without my camera and what I discovered through my lens. The approach demanded that I confront my own preconceived judgments and fears. Instead of seeing an overweight man, I saw the effects of a lifetime on psychiatric medications that distend and transform the body. I saw a love for life and an ability to be present. I discovered a voice yearning to be heard. And I witnessed a sense of courage in his choice to be part of this personal endeavor. The trust granted by Suavik demanded my dedicated effort. Sometimes there were dark moments. But many other times they were filled with laughter and light. My next series of photographs focuses on a close family member as well. 
It draws on similar elements of vulnerability and intimacy that I discussed in my previous sequence of work. Breaking the Girl takes a personal look at my niece Hannah's struggle with severe scoliosis while she simultaneously faces puberty. Beginning at the age of nine, Hannah was repeatedly and painfully fitted with and had worn numerous braces 20 hours a day. In the hope that this would pre prevent surgery. The title, Breaking the Girl, references the first time Hannah was asked to wear her newly fitted brace. As she got into the car for her ride home from the doctors, she thrashed wildly, and it took several minutes before her parents could begin driving home. She wore her braces diligently over this three and a half year period. One of the confounding issues Hannah had to face was that out of necessity, it is best to wait until you reach puberty before proceeding with the surgery. The reason for waiting is that most of your significant growth occurs by this time. Growth spurts are also the time where the curvature is most likely to advance. During this key period of both growing and being confined in the braces, she was filled with apprehension and frustration. There was always the unanswerable question of whether suffering in the brace was going to be worth the struggle that it caused. There seemed to be dueling forces at work. The body's natural urge to want to expand and the brace's resistance to this normal biological occurrence. The brace barely slowed the curvature. Last month, Hannah, who is now 12, underwent spinal surgery, which fused segments of her vertebrae together in combination of th with the insertion of two steel rods. Hannah's curvature went from 68 degrees to 26 degrees. Hannah has written intensely about her experience and offered to share a portion of her words with us today. I will begin reading her words now. The brace became both my secret armor as well as my enemy. I imagine hiding inside of it as if I were a turtle concealed in my shell. I fought long and hard to find out what I wanted to be on the other side. There were times I wanted to curl up and shut the world out. There were so many times I doubted myself and my abilities. The days before surgery, reflecting on everything I already went through, the night of March 2nd, 2014, was one of the hardest nights of my life. The nervousness rushed through me, and with it I felt doubt in myself. The voices in your head tell you not to do it. You want to believe them. But there's one solo voice that tells you not to believe, those fears, to put trust in your doctors, your family, and yourself. Now, I feel like I can stand up with confidence. I can be who I want the normal girl who I always imagined. In a final stand, I destroyed my brace. I do not need my armor anymore. I am interested in the emotional and physical connections people have to their bodies and minds during challenging times. The images explore the concept of feeling like a foreigner within one's own body. One thing that Suavik, my first subject, Hannah from Breaking the Girl, and I have in common is our shared experience with scoliosis. I look for commonality where there doesn't seem to be any. 
photography has created dialogues that I am grateful for. And I have yet to ever find a time where the act of photographing and just being present with a camera did not open my eyes and mind to new ways of understanding. As mentioned earlier, both Cesar and I spend large amounts of time unfocused on close family members. I would all like to invite Cesar to speak about his experience and his photographic work. I will be presenting two bodies of work this afternoon. The first is Betty Sweet Tea. Betty Sweet Tea is a decade-long project with my mother, Betty Ruth, as the subject. The second body of work, the FTs, are diptychs juxtaposing photographs I have taken over the past 10 years as well. Betty Sweet Tea addresses the multifaceted nature of my mother's personality and schizophrenia and how the two are inextricably linked. Ice tea for her brings levity and consistency to the sometimes dire and chaotic nature of her existence. She has spent years in and out of a state institution and numerous group homes. Through all of this, Betty Ruth has maintained her habit of daily iced tea along with her humor, vanity, and spirituality as a means of stability and decorum in the face of her circumstances. Betty Ruth was an artist and art teacher in the 1960s and 1970s. My initial impulse to photograph Betty Ruth was to create a visual counterpart to the ever-changing diagnoses she received from multiple doctors. I wanted a form of documentation to exist that was more comprehensive than these minimal clinical texts. Here we have a portrait um, painted by my mother of my father in the late 60s. And here we have a portrait of my father that I took recently. Betty Ruth lives in Texas and I live in New York, so we do not see each other often. Having the project gives me added reason to go and spend time with Betty Ruth when I may not otherwise. Spending time with her can be challenging. According to the Kaiser Foundation, Texas is ranked 50 out of 50 for state funding of the mentally ill. I find the camera centers me during the erratic moments with my mother when I have a difficult time zeroing in on her as she is spinning. In one sense, the project keeps me together and in the present. My presence with the camera often has a similar effect on her. She becomes more of an active participant during photo shoots. Her focus appears to become clearer. She is not solely a passive subject. I see fleeting glimpses of lucidity and self-awareness. Making this project and spending time with my mother has felt desperate, disassociative, humorous, manic, and nostalgic. My desire to make challenging images is my attempt to convey and process these feelings into pictures. Here are a few more images from Betty Sweet Tea.
This desire to make images that convey a spectrum of feelings concurrently, some of which are usually considered to be at odds to one another, is what led me to my next project, the FTs. While working on the long-term project with Betty Ruth, I produce other subject-based projects as well. In addition, I photograph whenever possible without a clear narrative in mind. The FTs are pairings of individual pictures I have made that are not anchored to a specific project when initially taking them. These are diptychs I create from my own archive after the fact. Meaning, my original intention when making the images does not involve combining them with other images. Relationships, links, and narratives between the images are constructed by the viewer because of the picture's proximity to one another. I will, I will show you a few more FTs and discuss one at the end. The title of this image is Paris and Screwdriver. The girl on the left is the daughter of a close friend. There had been a severe drought in Texas, and it had not rained in months. I was taking her picture when the sky changed and began to open up. She could not sit still and tried to catch the few raindrops that came down. I found the man on the right while wandering around a carnival in South Texas. He turned out to be part of the family who had been running the carnival for generations. I like the movements of their bodies within the frame, the similar palettes they have in spite of the distinct difference in lighting, the focus on each of their objects, his screwdriver, her locket, and the crazed joy they share. These pairings are the product of my constantly wandering gaze. I want these two folded images to complicate meaning and multiply sentiment. My intention is that they get closer to the visual experience of the uncanny. There is a kind of construction of personal mythology occurring through this series. We want to thank you very much for having us both here today. Um, we enjoyed it immensely, and we're going to leave you with uh, two outtakes from our projects with our family members. Thank you.